Anytime that you create a brand new role in your company, two things can happen. You can bring in someone and they completely crush it and you never want to see them leave. Or two, you are letting them go because it was a complete disaster. Because here's the thing, when you create a brand new role, you don't know what you need. Until you start, until you get moving, until you start doing day to day and figuring stuff out, you actually don't really know what it is you need. And so these two paths in front of you, the path where everything goes to hell, that's a path that most people find themselves on, most entrepreneurs find themselves on. But then there's this other path, the path where it does all work out. You do that right hire, where you set the things up right, where it just seems to work out. And it seems like maybe one sixth, one eighth, one tenth of the time that works out and it's amazing. How come all these other times when I create a new role and I hire a new person, it's just not working out? How can you set yourself up to have more opportunities for making it work? First, you gotta get comfortable knowing that you don't really know how this is gonna work. If you blindly walk in with confidence thinking, I've got all this stuff figured out, I know everything ahead of me and this is how it's gonna work, and you don't leave yourself open for changes, for tweaks, for partnering with the person coming into the role to make it happen, then you are setting yourself up, and especially the person you're hiring for failure. If you have super high expectations that they are gonna come in and you are just gonna hand them the roughest things and they are somehow going to figure it out the way that you would figure it out, you're setting yourself up for failure. Here's the thing, if they could do what you would do, they wouldn't come and work for you. That's what Gary Vaynerchuk's dad used to say. If they could do what you could do, they wouldn't be working for you, right? You can't put these expectations that they're just gonna come in and they're just gonna be able to figure everything out without putting a ton of time and a ton of effort into building that relationship and teaching them and making it work. So what do you do? You lead with intentions. You look to hire a partner. You admit that you don't have all the answers. And then when you bring this person in, you work really, really, really hard on figuring it out together. If you can put yourself in that position where you are working to set them up for success so that way they in turn can drive tons of value for your company, think about how much better off you're gonna be than just dropping someone in a role saying go and then later getting mad when things aren't working out. And that takes tons of time. It takes tons of effort and energy. And you're gonna think, if I'm busy doing this and I'm busy helping them, who's gonna do my job? Who's gonna, who's gonna do my stuff? This is what it takes to set people up for success. The best hires that I've ever had are when I bring on someone who is better than me at their given task. And then I work with them to figure out how to make them fit and empower them to drive the most value that they can. And when I listen to what they have to say and help shape the company and their role around them, that's when I've seen really dramatic gains in my business. And when I've gone the other way, when I bring someone in, but I kind of limit their scope of work or what I expect of them because we're not quite clicking or not quite on the same page, it's tough. It's tough to have that partnership mentality. And so the reality is that as entrepreneurs, the first person that we hire in a given role or the second person we hire in a role even, we tend to mess up. We mess up because we don't give it the time, we don't make it a partnership, we don't think about those types of things, we don't really know what we're looking for, and we bring someone on, and they don't succeed. That's happened to me a lot. But I've also had other people who come in for the first time, and they've been with me for six years, eight years, nine years, and they're the first person that I hired in that role. When you create a new role, and you are bringing that first person on, the very best thing you can do is work at creating process. I don't think entrepreneurs should sit down and create their own standard operating procedures all the time. I don't think that entrepreneurs should control things so much that they tell everyone what to do at every single step in every single way. But I also don't think that people can be left on their own, that they can just figure it out on their own and somehow create the processes the way you need them to. So the best thing that you can do is you can work with this new employee in this new role to help them figure out the road bumps but you can hold them accountable for creating the processes, for writing the processes, for noting what they do and how they do it, and putting pen to paper. It takes lots of time, it takes lots of effort to actually create standard operating procedures or how things are gonna work or whatever it is. And sometimes it's just faster for you to bang it out. I did one with Steve where I literally listed out for Steve and the other people on my team for my Mark Drager content, 
what I wanted the standard operating procedure to be. And it took me 10 minutes to list it out, but I had tons of holes. I didn't tell them what day of the week I wanted things done or how many days after the first thing, the next step would happen or anything. I just went, here are the steps that I want to take place and here's what I'm thinking. But it's up to him to make the process actually live and actually work and fill in all the details and tell me what's working and tell me what's not working. That's what it's about. You help give them enough time and attention to make sure they're set up for success. But then you tell them to poke the holes in the process, to figure out how to make things more efficient to be able to write the process so that way you don't have to. And so when you do these things, at six months to a year later, you either get an amazing employee who's gonna be with you for a long time because they're one of those unicorns that just worked out, or you're six months later, you realize you may have hired the wrong person because you didn't know what you want, but at the very least, you get written processes out of this. You get an understanding of how long things take with that person. You get an understanding of how things worked under that person. And that becomes the new groundwork for the second hire or for the third hire or for the 10th person, however many people it takes to be able to figure out what is wrong. If you're at the 10th person, what's wrong is you. But that's for a different video and that's for a different day. <laughs>I like ending it that way. Sure. <laughs> if growing and scaling your business by being better at sales and better at marketing, better at customer experience is important to you, be sure to check out this video right over here. And like always, subscribe to my channel, click on the bell icon, and get each video every day when it drops.